This is the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast. This is VP. We are a solutions-based podcast, diving into the world of contrarian investing and alternative finance. You can find us hosted on the No Nonsense Forex YouTube channel, nonsenseforex.com, and podcast players everywhere. Episode 91 is made possible by Bybit. We have a new monthly airdrop. I know I got to you a little bit late on the February airdrop. Let me get to you early on the March version. Uh, We are dropping XRP this month, $50 to 20 of my traders who are able to trade 10K in volume throughout the month of March. And that's all you have to do. Uh, Now, those of you who participated in the April promotion, uh, check your rewards hub somewhere in between the dates of March 15th and March 21st uh, to see if you were chosen for the Ethereum airdrop we had last month. Uh, But feel free to get started on the XRP airdrop for the month of March. I get to choose the reward, and I would never drop you anything I don't already endorse or hold myself. And so this month it is XRP. Uh, But you have to be one of my traders, and you do that by clicking the link down below in the description because membership has its rewards. It is the 10-Minute Contrarian Podcast, and if you snuck a peek at the blog, you already know what's going on here. Now, by the way, everything I talk about here is going to be linked to the blog I wrote on Thursday. I've since added on to it, and that blog link will be down below in the show notes for easy access. Uh, you will certainly want to go there immediately after this podcast episode is over with, uh, but stay with me for now. Uh, so, I don't remember the episode, I should look it up, <laughs> but you guys remember it. It was a, a 10 Minute Contrarian episode called Live Somewhere Else. And it talked about giving yourself options and escape routes and possibly just relocating altogether to some place that just flat out treats you better and you can live like a, a higher class citizen than where you are right now uh, with very little sacrifice. You know, you can have business autonomy, you can pay a lot less in taxes like I do, or you can just simply have these options there for a rainy day or in case things get a bit crazy. Uh, Now, for the longest time, nobody would ever believe me when I said, hey, things could really get crazy out there. And then along came the pandemic and all of these uh, so-called conspiracy theorists were pretty much right about everything. Uh, Not only can this happen, this did happen, and it probably will happen in the future. If you thought this is the last we've seen of it, uh, please make a bet with me, and I will gladly take the other side. Uh, Now, one of the things we talked about specifically in that episode was the brilliance of residence permits. I had no idea. I thought it was either you have a passport in a country or you don't. No, residence permits are every bit as good. Um, The only thing you can't do is vote. Um, But you can do pretty much everything else. It's great, and you don't have to fulfill all the requirements for a passport or pay all the money or, you know, jump through all the hoops. You know, it's tremendous. I had no idea, you know, and you can start a business in this country. You can do so many things. You can own and drive a car, get an apartment, buy a house, buy real estate, do whatever you want. Uh, Now, the problem is, is these things are generally expensive or time consuming, or there's just no way you'll ever be able to get one in the majority of countries. But there are some countries where you can. And in that previous podcast episode, we spoke about that. Uh, And for very little investment and often very short amounts of time spent in that actual country, you know, some of them have physical presence requirements, some of them don't. You can have this freedom and this autonomy to have escape routes and just simply have options. You know, we learned during the pandemic, most countries would not allow you to enter into that country unless you were a citizen or unless you were something called a foreign resident, which those are the people who have residence permits and they need those people. You know, often at times they own businesses there and have employees, you know, or they're, you know, specialists like an engineer or a doctor or something like that that country needs. So they're always going to allow you in. Uh, And then you can start a business there. You can open up a bank there. And we've already talked about all of the wonderful things having offshore banks can do for you. You know, crypto people are learning this the hard way. There's a full-on war going out there in the United States against crypto right now and they are targeting our on-ramps and our off-ramps but i personally as an american have the peace of mind of knowing that i'm probably going to be just fine no matter what the ruling is you know because i have done the work early on to make sure that i am set up for life in terms of having all of these exits should i need them 
you know? I don't know if really bad things are going to happen. I'm not rooting for bad things to happen. All I know is that the chance of very restrictive things happening to citizens all over the world has gone way up from where it was four or five years ago. And so just simply having that peace of mind of making sure that everything I worked for is not not maybe ruined, but really impeded by a third party that I can't control. I can't say it enough, contrarians. It's so worth it. Um, now, in the blog post I wrote on Thursday, and the one you can access right now, you will see me get interviewed and where I disclosed some of the residence permits that I have. Um, so I'll just go ahead and tell you right now, I have, you know, I have American citizenship, so I have a passport there. And then I have a, residence, a temporary residence card in Mexico, and then I have a permanent one in Panama. And to sum up a little bit what I was saying in that interview, uh, for the longest time, the Mexican residence card was the easiest one to get, and is still one of the easiest ones to get. It's stupid easy. You don't really have to live in Mexico. You can just kind of stop by for a little bit, talk to a lawyer, and get the process started. And it's uh, it, incredibly cheap for what you're getting. But there are requirements, and you have to have so much in your bank account, and you can't have a criminal record. Uh, and it's like I said, it's very easy if you take action. If you're a fence sitter and you like to sit there and hem and haw about things and say things like, okay, I'm going to do it, but I'm not going to get it started until next year, well, then people like you are the ones that get punished. People like me who just take maybe one or two days to figure it out and then take action immediately, you know, we are the ones that get to reap the rewards. Let me give you some examples. The cost to get permanent residence in the country of Panama is now 10 times more expensive than when I did it years ago. The amount of money you must have in your bank account for a Mexican temporary residence is about 60% higher than it was when I got the process started just over a year ago. These things only get more expensive and more restrictive as time goes on. Uh, you might have seen me mention it in a tweet a couple months ago. Uh, Paraguay was a place where that was pretty easy for the most part, but now it's not. Um, the, probably the most popular visa program out there, the Portugal Golden Visa, uh, is gone um, because you know it, people flood into it. And what happens when people flood into it? You know, you either get too many people, like the case of Panama, it's, a, it's not a big country, and it went from three million to four million people in about ten years, and they're like, all right, we got to stop. Or in the case of Portugal, is driving up real estate prices, and they're like, okay, we're at our capacity, we've had enough, we got to shut this thing off. Um, but along the way, you will see the requirements get more difficult and more restrictive uh, because they want to slowly start limiting the people that are coming in. And also, if I'm being honest, there are certain countries that other countries just don't want a lot of their citizens. And when they see those people start to flood in, they start slamming on the brakes. You know, a lot of things can happen. But my point is, is these things only get more restrictive and more expensive as time goes on. Uh, I still think Mexico is a smoking deal. No, but you have to have about 50 grand in your bank account to show them in order for them to let you through the door. You know, it wasn't always like that, you know, but it is now. So I want you to remember these things going forward as I uncover what is now by far the cheapest and the easiest second residency you can possibly get. And it's not even close. This is an e-residency, like you might remember Estonia used to have, so it's super easy no red tape at all, which is great because these things always have their own degree of nonsense attached to it and hoops you got to jump through. And it's not bad, but it's, it's still there. Uh, this is not. Uh, you don't have to go there. It's all done on the Binance chain. You know, it's quite revolutionary. Uh, Vitalik Buterin and CZ from Binance have already gotten theirs. And when I first heard about this, I kind of dismissed it because I didn't know much about it. Then in one of my uh, Latin American Telegram groups, like everybody was getting it. I'm like, oh, okay, let's check this out. So I did, and I was blown away by what you get for what you're spending. So if you didn't already know, for $248 USD, and you will have to renew this every year, so you would have, to, I think you would have to pay this every year, uh, but that's fine. If it's not for you, you can just simply cancel you can get residency, e-residency, in the country of Palau. If you didn't know, Palau is a Pacific island. 
It is fairly developed for a Pacific island. Some of those places are just kind of left for dead. You know, not much going on. But you know, I've talked to somebody who's lived there, and the podcast episode that I posted on that blog, you know, not the ones I've talked about in the past, but there is a specific episode of the My Latin Life podcast where he talked to the guy who's pretty much at the, the heart of all this. And that podcast will answer so many of your questions. But with this e-residency, you can start a business there. You get a physical address there, which is bananas. I mean, what I pay for remote physical addresses now every month is kind of high. Like, it's, it's just the cost of doing business, I understand. But <laughs> to just get one for free like that, uh, the country of Palau uses the United States dollar. And they have United States dollar banks there, including some American banks. Like, uh, they have a branch of the Bank of Hawaii, the Bank of Guam that you will have access to, not through the e-residency, but if you ever just go there, I'm pretty sure you can just open up a bank account, and I don't know if you can tie it to your business or not, but you can easily start a business there as well. And I'm telling you, simply having that offshore business presence can open a lot of doors. And if you just wanted to screw off and go out there and live there for a little while, uh, they make it sound pretty great. You know, they say the internet is very high speed out there. They have beaches, water sports, scuba diving. You know, the whole reason this thing exists in the first place and you have to jump on opportunities like this is because they got hit really hard. Their tourism industry got hit really hard during the pandemic. Um, They opened the door to the Chinese, but a lot of Chinese were going down there and not um, patronizing the Palawan hotels and restaurants. They just... And I kind of know this from the hospitality industry. They have a tendency to do this. They only go to the Chinese places. Uh, So Palau got hit twice, and they need to make that money back. And so that's why this thing exists. Uh, But if you didn't know, Palau is not a very big country, and they're not going to be able to do this for too long, I don't think. So for $248 in a process that I just went through this week, and it took about 20 minutes. And I had to use their chat service because something like something didn't go right with the picture I sent them. And their chat service was great. I'm like, why aren't these things always this easy? Um, so look, contrarians, I know the interest has always been there with a lot of you in terms of having this extra layer of freedom and options and potential tax savings. You know, but maybe you just didn't know where to go. Maybe Latin America is too far away from where you live. Or maybe deep down you're just a fence sitter that needs a reason to take action. And perhaps now you have one. You know, look, this at at its core is a financial prepping podcast. And as the host, and maybe as one of your guides throughout all of this, I feel like I'd really be doing you a disservice if I didn't point something like this out. Uh, Now, what I cannot do is answer all of your questions, but that's where the the My Latin Life podcast episode comes in, which is now on that blog. So again, make sure you go there after you go here. And I will also include the the web address you go to to sign up for all of this. Uh, You can pay through the Ethereum blockchain or the, uh, the Binance smart chain. I, uh, you guys remember I sold off my BNB token, so I had some USDC just sitting there in my MetaMask wallet um, on the Binance Smart Chain, so I just paid with that. And again, it was super easy. I'm going through the background check right now, which I think takes five or 10 days. And then they actually send you a physical card through the mail, and there it is. You, know, you now have dual residency. You know, or in my case, this will be my fourth. You know, I have no idea what I'm going to do with it, um, but at least I have options. Options are really good. You know, they're good normally. They're really, really good when things get bad. You know, and in certain places, things are still messed up. Like, I think just a month ago in the United States, uh, you, uh, if you didn't have a passport or a residence card, uh, you could not enter the United States unless you already had a Vax Pass. Uh, But the benefits of simply doing something like this and for such a low cost, you know, there's still some unanswered questions here. It's still a work in progress, but it's most of the way there. Uh, And the asymmetry is off the charts, in my opinion. Uh, So check that blog post out. Check that podcast episode on the blog post out that should answer all the questions you have. And the live chat on the main site should probably answer any remaining questions that you might have that weren't answered anywhere else. So as you can see, I'm attempting to take away all of your excuses. Uh, And look, I don't know what's going to come of all this. You know, I'm simply pointing it out, and it's something that I've done myself. I rarely tell people to do something I haven't done myself. You know, but it's out there. And I doubt most of you knew about it until today. 
You know, so maybe one of the benefits also is telling your friends, hey, you know, I got a second residency. I'm James Bond now. I can, I can go to Palau anytime I want and live there. And your friends are going to be like, what the fuck? Are you Really? Why? That's crazy. Who would do that? And then later, if poop does hit the fan again, and people like us have options and people like them don't, and these programs don't exist anymore, you know, we can, if we wanted to, let them know that we were certainly not crazy. We were just early.